Okay, welcome back to another episode of Dirty Dave's Garage. Today we're going to be installing this Max Hall motorcycle wheel chock on this Aluma aluminum motorcycle trailer. Uh, we're going to be going through the process and hopefully be able to help somebody out. So stay tuned and we'll film as we get started. Alright, the first thing I'm doing, I don't know if you can see, but I stretched out my tape measure from center of wheel to center of wheel. This is for a Harley Street Glide, uh, pretty good sized bike. But I'm trying to figure out what the, uh, basically the center of each wheel, it looks like about 65 inches from center to center. I'll show you the front wheel. It looks about like it's centered there. And uh, yeah, we're at 65 inches, so we're gonna use that measurement to figure out where we wanna put the front wheel chock. So that's step one. Okay, so let me show you what I've done so far. I marked out on well, my tape measure where the center of the front wheel is going to fall, which is basically where I put that piece of tape. Then I'll put another piece of tape about 35, 36 inches back, which is about right under the motor and the transmission, because I want that as close to over the center of the axles as I can get, because that's the best load weight bearing place on the trailer. I also put a piece of tape back here where the center of the wheel is going to fall approximately so I know how much room I've got. I've got plenty of room I think if I, if I go with this position uh, I think we'll be in in good shape. So that's what we're going to use. Uh, we'll, we'll line up the chock. And I don't know if you can see it on this video but on mine there are metal ribs every place you see a seam there's a metal rib, rib under there so when we drill we want to make sure we're inside those so we don't hit the ribs and we're going to use those bolts over there they have a metal washer that goes up under the trailer through the floor and then those black spacers go under this since we're not mounting it in a truck bed you see how it's kind of raised so it fits over the ribs of a truck bed we're not doing that so we'll put the washers under it <clears throat> to fill up that empty space so it doesn't bend in so we're gonna probably end up somewhere about here there's our seam if you could see it there's a line going through there where the the seam is we want the bolts on either side of that so somewhere in there i think we'll be good we're pretty close to the front of the trailer but looks like the center of the tire we'll probably move it back just a hair center of the tire is about where we want it and you know this is, doesn't have to be perfect you just don't want to hit those ribs and you want to make sure you got plenty of room for the whole bike to fit on and i think if this is where we end up we'll be in good shape because we got plenty of room in the back there we got at least another foot and a half if not two feet of space past the rear center line of the rear tire so we got it marked out we're going to get some holes drilled and we'll be back all right one other quick note if you see here i've kind of centered it the chalk i measured from the edge of each side <clears throat> to this point on the stone guard but you can use any point as long as you use the same point on both sides i'm about 17 and a quarter inches on both sides so that way i know my my chalk is centered i'm probably uh going to put some tape mark my spots on the chalk where it's uh, going to sit and I'll mark my holes before I move the chalk out of the way to get my holes drilled. So I'm going to take a sharpie, put in there and try to find like the center of each of those square holes, which ought to be fun, and uh, put a mark where I need to drill through. And I believe it's a 3 8 inch hole we're going to need to drill. I don't know if I have a 3 8 inch drill bit, but we'll start with a small one, make a pilot hole, and then uh, enlarge it with a bigger drill bit. And I have a step drill. If I need to a uh, step drill bit I'll show you that in a minute if we need to use it we'll be back all right so I got all my spots marked so I put some tape to mark the outside edges of my chalk don't think I'm gonna need them but if you can see I used a sharpie to make dots right in the center where each hole is gonna be Probably gonna be fun drilling right on that rib but I wanted to stay clear of this seam because I know there's a metal rib under there so we're in open space here and here on both sides. So what I've got, 
I've got a, one of these little spring activated punches. We're going to use that to punch a dimple to start drilling. We'll use this small drill bit to drill pilot hole. Then we'll use probably this step drill bit to get a hole big enough to put the bolts through once we have a hole big enough for this to go through. So we'll probably have to use this to start and maybe a, a little bigger size, big enough for this point to get started in. And we'll see what happens. All right, for the sake of being thorough, I'm gonna show you uh, coming down here with the punch. Find your marks, find the center of it. your punch to make a couple dimples so your drill bit has something to keep it from sliding around on. Now if you're doing this on a wooden trailer, you may not have that issue, but this is aluminum. Should be pretty soft to drill through, but uh, the drill bit can slide on metal a little easier than wood. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, see how we make out drilling the holes. All right, we got our first set of pilot holes drilled. I don't know if you can see them, but try zooming in a little. I think you can see a couple of them. We're gonna try uh, making them a little bigger. Drilled right through them pretty easy. This aluminum's not real thick. So uh, I might try using the stepper bit next. If it works, we'll, we'll show that without going to a bigger size drill bit first. Let's see what it does. All right, so the stepper drill worked pretty good. I'm gonna show you. On this one, uh, you go to the last step and it made it just big enough, but that small pilot hole seemed to work. To draw out the next one, show you how easy it is. Not putting a whole lot of pressure on the drill. Once you get that first notch in, they start going pretty quick. I'm not sure if that was the right one or not. Nope, one more. So it does go all the way to the last one. Got our hole in good shape. I'll finish drilling these and we'll be back. All right, got our four holes drilled. I'm gonna get the little dust pan out or my shop vac, suck up all these metal filings, and then we'll go ahead and mount the wheel chuck. All right, as I mentioned earlier, we put these black washers down. They're gonna go under the chalk. The chalk will sit on top of the holes, and that's because we're not mounting it in a bed, the bed of a truck where you've got those ribs to deal with. So we're going to set the chalk on top of that, drop the bolts through, and then we'll put the washers and the lock nuts underneath the trailer to hold the chalk in place. So probably have to fool with it a little bit because I'm sure those will move once I set the chalk on top. But once I get it situated and get the bolts dropped through, uh, we'll move to the next part. Okay, quick little update, at least in my case, the original bolts that came with it are three inch long bolts. They're just too long because uh, they're made to go through like wooden floors. If you have a wooden floor in your trailer or you just need the extra, th and you notice they aren't even threaded all the way through. So when I stuck them under, you know, this is just thin aluminum plate on top of these ribs for support. I, I didn't have enough threads. I could tell on the spacer by the time I would have put the hardware underneath. There just wasn't enough threads. I didn't feel comfortable. So I went out, I ran out to Lowe's and picked up some two inch stainless steel with the threads going all the way up. We're gonna use the shorter bolts in, in my instance. Might not happen in your case. You know, if you're going through a thicker wooden floor, probably be okay, or maybe even a truck bed, I don't know. But uh, having those extra threads, I know I'm gonna get a good secure lockdown. So I'm gonna swap them out, get them bolted in, we'll be back.
All right, so I cheated a little. Used the uh, air ratchet with a 17 millimeter uh, deep uh, deep well socket on it, and it worked nicely. Got the uh, chalk on, solid as a rock, not going anywhere. So that did the trick. So for this thin floored trailer, I went with two inch all threaded carriage bolts, stainless steel from Lowe's. Put the washers right under the plate and then the, wa the flat washer. I put the nylon washers under the base so that it kept it up off the deck, gave it some support. And then I just used the flat stainless washers and lock nuts underneath. So it should be okay. That's how I did it. All right, so here's the finished product. The view of the finished product or installed wheel chalk. Uh, if you want to get one of these uh, Max Hall wheel chocks, they look like they're pretty well made and they're fairly inexpensive. I'll put a link to my affiliate link on uh, Amazon if you want to get one. That's where I got mine and uh, uh, you can get yourself hooked up. All right, take it easy.